everyone. We are pleased to have you here. here. I am Leo Zalantajo. And I am Clarice Joy de la Peña. And, and for, for today, today, we, we are, are the Cypher Heptadin. there. I know there's a lot of things you need to learn about me. So without further ado, I'll start it right away by introducing my name. My generic name is Cyproheptidin, and I am commonly known with my brand names Periactin and PMS Cyproheptidin. I also have a chemical name called C21H21N. My therapeutic drug classifications are antihistamines H1 receptor antagonist first generation, antipyretic, allergy, cold, and cough remedies. While my pharmacologic drug classification is piperidine derivative antihistamine. Now that you've known my drug classifications, we now proceed to my pregnancy category. I am identified in Pregnancy Category B, where animal reproduction studies have failed to demonstrate a risk to the fetus. Two studies in pregnant women have not shown that cyproheptidin increases the risk of abnormalities when administered during the first, second, and third trimesters of pregnancy. Because the studies in humans cannot preclude the possibility of harm, I, the cyproheptidine, should be used during pregnancy only if needed. Now let's go to the mechanism of action of cyproheptidine. Antihistamines compete with histamine for H1 receptor sites on smooth muscles of the bronchi, GI tract, uterus, and large blood vessels. They bind to cellular receptors, preventing access of histamine thereby suppressing histamine-induced allergic symptoms. They don't directly alter histamine or its release. Drug also displays significant anticholinergic and antiserotonin activity, which may result in increased appetite. Also, its therapeutic effect would be decreased symptoms of histamine excess such as sneezing, rhinorrhea, nasal and ocular paritis, ocular tearing, and redness. Also, decreased cold or urticarial. Next is my pharmacokinetics. In here, you know what the human body does when I am taken as medication. So first, I am well absorbed from the GI tract after oral dosing. It is still unknown as to where I am distributed but it appears that I am almost completely metabolized in the liver. In excretion, my drug metabolites are excreted primarily in urine, but unchanged drug isn't excreted in urine. Small amounts of unchanged cyproheptidin and metabolites are excreted in feces. Here presented are some pharmacokinetics considerations. So my route is oral, Onset is within 15 to 60 minutes, peak is from 1 to 2 hours, and duration is 8 hours. We are done with my pharmacokinetics. Now let's go to my indications. I am indicated for relief of allergic symptoms caused by histamine release including seasonal and perennial allergic rhinitis, pruritus, chronic urticaria, cold urticaria, allergic conjunctivitis, and muscular cluster headaches. For adults, my dose would be 4 mg by mouth, thrice or 4 times a day. My maximum dose is 0.5 mg daily. For children ages 7 to 14, my dose would be 4 mg by mouth, twice or thrice a day. My maximum dose is 16 mg daily. 
while for children ages 2 to 6, my dose would be 2 mg by mouth twice or thrice a day. The maximum dose is 12 mg daily. I am also indicated for Cushing syndrome. For adults, my dose would be 8 to 24 mg by mouth daily in divided doses. Also, I can be used for stimulation of appetite. Now, let's proceed with the following contraindications and cautions for the use of cyproheptadine. First, I am contraindicated in patients hypersensitive to me or other drugs of similar chemical structure as mine. In those with acute asthma, angle closure glaucoma, stenosing peptic ulcer, symptomatic prostatic hyperplasia, bladder neck obstruction, and pyloroduodenal obstruction. Also, in concurrent therapy with MAO inhibitors and patients with liver disease. Second, use me cautiously in patients with increased intraocular pressure, hyperthyroidism, cardiovascular disease, hypertension, or bronchial asthma. Next is breastfeeding women. Antihistamines such as cyproheptadine shouldn't be used during breastfeeding. Many of these drugs appear in breast milk, exposing the infant to risk of unusual excitability. I may cause premature infants to have particular risk for seizures. Number four is pediatric patients neonates or premature infants. The central nervous system stimulation, agitation, confusion, tremors, and hallucinations is more common in children and may require dosage reduction. That is why I am not indicated for use in newborn or premature infants. Safety and effectiveness in children younger than age 2 haven't been established. I am also contraindicated in geriatric patients. Elderly patients are more susceptible to my sedative effect. If you're a nurse, instruct patients to change position slowly and gradually because elderly patients may experience dizziness or hypotension more readily than younger patients. Our last contraindication is pregnancy. Although I am in category B, the safety and effectiveness of this medication is not yet established to pregnant patients, so only use me when needed. Now let's go to my side and adverse effects. Yes, I know I can help you with some of your respiratory problems, but I can also cause some unwanted effects. Although not all of these side effects may occur, but if they do, you should seek medical attention. For your central nervous system, I may cause a drowsiness, dizziness, headache, fatigue, sedation, sleepiness, incoordination, confusion, restlessness, insomnia, nervousness, tremor, seizures, toxic psychosis, and excitation, which is increased in children. Next is for your cardiovascular system. I may cause arrhythmias, hypotension, palpitations, and tachycardia. For your gastrointestinal system, I may cause nausea, vomiting, epigastic distress, dry mouth, diarrhea, constipation, cholestasis, hepatic failure, hepatitis, hepatic function abnormality, anorexia, diarrhea, and jaundice. For your eyes, I may cause blurred vision. For your genital urinary system, I may cause urinary tension, urinary frequency, difficult urination, and early menses. I can also cause weight gain, and for your integumentary system, I can cause a rash and edema, excessive perspiration, urticaria, 
and photosensitivity. For your hematologic system, I may cause hemolytic anemia, leukopenia, agranulocytosis, and thrombocytopenia. I know I can help you with some of your respiratory problems, but I can also cause unwanted effects in your respiratory system, such as dryness of nose and throat, thickening of bronchial secretions, tightness of chest and wheezing, and nasal stuffiness. Other effects that I may cause would be fatigue, chills, and headache. We are done with all the information about ourselves, and now we will discuss nursing responsibilities to do before, during, and after administration. In the before nursing responsibilities, you should perform physical assessment to establish baseline data before drug therapy begins, to determine effectiveness of therapy, and to check for occurrence of adverse effects. Next, you should assess for hypersensitivity to the drug or allergies such as rhinitis, conjunctivitis, and hives prior to and periodically throughout therapy. Next, you should also assess lung sounds and respiratory function prior to and periodically throughout therapy. Another thing that should also be performed before drug administration is to conduct patient and family education about the following. First, instruct patient to take cyproheptadine exactly as directed. Missed dose should be taken as soon as remembered and do not let patient double up on missed dose. The syrup should be accurately measured using calibrated medication cup or measuring device. The medication may cause drowsiness, so as a nurse, you should advise your patient to avoid driving and other activities requiring alertness until response to the drug is known. Next, you should also advise patient to use sunscreen and protective clothing to prevent a photosensitivity reaction. Educate them the importance of the drug therapy and then tell the patient that GI distress can be reduced by taking drug with food or milk. Then, instruct patient to report if tolerance to drug develops because a different antihistamine may need to be prescribed. Then lastly, for geriatric patients, teach them and their family about anticholinergic effects and to contact a healthcare provider if such effect persists. Now let's talk about the nursing responsibilities during the administration of cyproheptadine. First, give this drug as ordered following safe and appropriate administration to ensure therapeutic effects. Next, administer by mouth with food, water, or milk to minimize gastric irritation. Next, if you are using the liquid form of cyproheptadine, Carefully measure the dose using a special measuring device or spoon. Do not use a household spoon because you may not get the correct dose. Then, provide comfort and safety measures to help patient tolerate drug side effects. Lastly, since the drug may cause dizziness, supervision of ambulation and other safety precautions may be warranted. After the drug has been administered, these are the following things to consider. Document data after administration. Monitor for effectiveness of comfort measures. Monitor for compliance to drug therapy regimen. Then monitor for adverse effects or alleviation of allergic symptoms. Then check patient for improvement of appetite. And lastly, Monitor the level of alertness. For some patients, the sedative effect disappears spontaneously after 3-4 to four days of drug administration. Wow, cyproheptadine really does a great job. I can't believe it's done. Yes, and I hope you all enjoyed and learned as well. That's Anyways, all for today guys. We'll wrap, we'll wrap up and, and stay tuned for our next videos. Bye! Bye.